Okay, so um, continuing with uh, fin personal finance, now we're going to actually finally get to annuities, which is really how our finance structure is today in financial institutions. So um, we're going to learn a few things on a few more formulas. They come a little more intense, but don't worry. You don't have to memorize the formulas. You just have to understand the scenario, then look up the formula for that scenario, and then use the calculator to calculate. Because again, we just want you to be able to take, have a better understanding of the scenarios versus the algebra, right? Okay, so we start off with that f problem with Professor Smart saving for um, child geniuses education, right? And as we said before, he would have to put in like $9,600 in today and let it sit for, for 16 years to make the $20,000 for the college tuition. Now, again, that's not very really realistic, right? Because... Um, we don't usually, if we have to save money for college, especially if it's 20000 half the amount I have to deposit today, it doesn't really make sense. The goal is over 16 years to deposit a little at a time and then eventually be able to have that college fund for your child. So what we're going to do is something more realistic, like um, 401ks. If you have a 401k, you definitely have that. IRA, a, 60, a 403b Roth, right? There's just some 457. There's these lots of like retirement plans that it's, it's called, it's savings, right? You're depositing to save later. That's going to be an annuity. Okay, so some people save like bi-monthly. So they save twice a month. Some people save monthly. I say personally, I save for retirement and um, and in my savings uh, one, only once a month. Um, so my compounding period would be 12 times a year. But when I was young and I was in college, I got paid twice a month. And so I did get, I did do, t my compounding periods were 24 because I made 24 deposits a year. So instead of 12 deposits a year. Um, so it just depends on your deposit habits and stuff. So, um, and then most likely it comes out of your paycheck. So you don't even see it gone. Okay. So an annuity is a contract between a person and an insurance company that, or a financial institution that is designed to meet retirement or long range goals, right? Which you make a lump sum payment or a series of payments. So in this case, in this book, in this class, we're going to make a series of payments with annuity. And then in return, at the end of that period, the insurer agrees to make periodic payments to you, right? Retirement. And then that way you can have some quality of life later in life. All right. So um, this is the formula. Don't be alarmed. It's crazy. And if we were in a college algebra, I'd probably show you how we got it. But we're not. We're here to just make our lives better. <laughs> so um, all, what we really need to know is the parameters. And this is why I love like my little margin that I have when I write out the problem and the parameters. But P sub N is what we know it to be, right? It's the amount, the ending amount. D is going to be the monthly deposit into that account. And then R over R and K and N are all what you are as usual. The only difference now is we can't put P sub zero here because it's not a one deposit thing, right? I'm making many deposits. So write this down because it's, it's very important that you realize the difference between this formula and all the others. Okay, so if the compounding is not explicitly stated, this is what I was saying before was if it's not explicitly stated, then we just assume it's in um, this. It's the same number as the number of deposits per year, the compounding. So if the if K essentially if K isn't given, we assume it takes the same time units as R and D. So if it, you have deposits every month, then K will automatically be 12. If you have deposits 24 times a year, you know, your K will be 24. So if something isn't explicitly stated, we assume that same type of time frame of the deposits. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and look at a, um, an example. So a more conservative investment account pays 3% interest. If $5 is deposited each day into this account, how much is in the account after 10 years? How much interest is earned? So notice that I have 10 years here and deposited each day. Now, um, if it, and, and, okay. So, So if the dollar amount is deposited each day, we assume K is being compounded every day, 365 times a year. So um, we have to make sure that even though it doesn't explicitly say, oh, it's compounding every day, we see that the deposits are every day and therefore the K will also be daily per year. So let's go ahead and write this out. So um, let me write down the formula. So P sub N is equal to D times one plus R over K to the N K minus one all over R over K. Okay, and so here we know that N is going to be 10 years Let's see, D is a $5 deposit per day. R, the interest rate is 3%, or in other words, 0 0.03. And K, we assume that because it's each day you're making the deposit, that we're going to have K to be a daily compounding period. So there are 365 days in a year. So we'll leave it like that. And then um, K, and that's it, that's all we need. So let me draw the little margin. And let's put in this amount. So we're looking for the amount on the account after 10 years if I deposit $5 a day at 3% interest. So P sub 10 is going to be equal to five times one plus 0 0.03 over 365 to the 10 times 365 power minus one, all in the numerator, times R over K, so 0 0.03 over 365. Now this looks a little like crazy, the formula, but don't be alarmed. Again, I don't really care about um, the formula itself, but I do care how I'm gonna put it in the calculator. So let's go ahead and insert our own parentheses that we'll put in the calculator. So I'm going to start off the numerator with a parenthesis and end it with the parenthesis. I'll make sure if it's not denoted as an exponent already, then I'm going to put parentheses around the exponent. I'm also going to put a parenthesis around my denominator. So these will just be the extra parentheses for the calculator. Okay, so let's put this in the calculator. We're gonna be careful and mindful of our parentheses here. So um, parenthesis five, parenthesis, parenthesis, so be very careful, one plus 0 0.03 over 365, parenthesis, exponent, parenthesis, 10 times 365, parenthesis minus one, parenthesis and parenthesis. Now we need two parentheses because we had the parenthesis for the numerator, which is the red one. This black parenthesis near the one goes because five needs to be distributed, right? It has to be the five times this whole thing. So just be careful that you have one, two, three opens and then three closed. So be careful, be very robotic with your entry because you want it to be identical. Okay, then divide by parenthesis 0 0.03 divided by 365, parenthesis, enter. So we get after 10 years, um, 21,282, and let's round to the nearest cent. So six, four is the test digit, which is below five, so it'll just be six cents.
So after 10 years um, of a $5 deposit every day, you'll get $21,282.06 after 10 years. But recall that some of you may say, oh, all right, like 21,000. No, that's not interest. That's not free money. You put in on that, right? You put in on that money. You put $5 a day, every day, every year for 10 years. So you put in some on this, some of this um, investment, but it doesn't mean you didn't earn good interest either, right? So let's go ahead. The next question is to see how much interest is earned. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's first find out, well, how much did you put in, right? So let you put in $5 a day, every day, every year for 10 years, and then see what the difference would be from our ending amount after 10 years. So the second part here would be to find the interest earned. Okay. So um, the first thing we need to find is the total deposits, the P sub zero, right? The original amount that you're putting in. Okay. Well, if you put in, if you put in $5 per day, times every day, 365 days a year for 10 years, right? This now reminds you of chapter five, right? And notice all the units reduce out and we're just left with the dollars. So if we have that, we can go to our calculator now and put in five times 365, because you did it every day, every year, for 10 years, times 10. So we get $18,250. So these are your total deposits. Now part B, now let's go ahead and find the total interest earned. So to, the total interest earned remember is going to be the ending amount, in our case P sub 10, minus the original amount, which is going to be the total deposits that we just calculated. Okay, so P sub 10 was $21,282.06 minus the original amount of $18,250. So let me go ahead and just take the values from my calculator. Notice it highlights if I hit the up or any of these arrows. See, let me grab this. I highlighted it, press enter, minus, go up, grab that number, enter, and notice it has the two subtraction. It just saves time and less room for error, for um, key and errors, right? Okay, so we have 3,000. $32.06. So the total interest that you earned off this conservative investment was $3,000 over 10 years. That's not too bad because you did put in, let's see, if we just said five times 365, we could see how much you're putting in every year. So you're putting only 1,825 every year. And if I divide that by 12, Notice that you're, you are um, only putting in about $150 every month. So for an, think about it, if it, you had an investment of about $150 a month into a savings account that gave you 3% interest, you would make a pretty good um, amount of interest in that small account. So it's good enough for like a college fund or something like that. So let's try one more example. This example says Mr. DJ needs $3,000 in two years to purchase a fancy new stereo system. How much should Mr. De DJ deposit into an account each quarter with an interest rate of 8% compounded quarterly? So notice this is a little different. It's not letting me know how much Mr. DJ is depositing every time period. It's saying, I don't care how much I got to, I need $2,000 in three, I need $3,000 in two years because I, I know I'm going to need that. So notice here, it gives us some information. It tells us how much we need in the end, right? And it tells us that it wants us to deposit each quarter 
and it gives us an interest rate for every three months, right, quarterly. So notice that these match, these time frames match. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and I'll put the formula right here once again. So D times 1 plus R over K to the NK minus 1 in the numerator and then R over K in the denominator. So right away I know that um, N is going to be 2 years and P sub N is going to be um, P sub 2 which is I want $3,000 in 2 years. The amount of money I should deposit every quarter, I have no idea, but I do know the rate is 8% or 0 0.08 and compounded quarterly. So K quarterly means 4. And then it looks like we're ready to go. So draw your little appendix <laughs> line. All right, so here we have P sub 2 will be equal to D times 1 plus the rate, so 0 0.08 over 4, the k, to the nk, so I know it's 2 times 4 minus 1, all in the numerator. And in the denominator, it's just going to be r over k. Now, let me make this look a little nicer. I know p sub 2 is 3,000, and that's going to be equal to d times 1 plus 0 0.08 over 4, to the 2 times 4, which I'll put as 8, minus 1, all over 0 0.08 over 4. Okay, so this one, I'm going to I'm gonna give you a formula for this, but I'm just going to prove the formula by completing this problem. So we do want to find the quarterly deposit, but I do have it isolated in this numerator. Now, what's nice about this um, formula here, right, is that um, we can isolate it because it's a coefficient of the parentheses, right? Okay, so I'm going to use some arithmetic. Um, just like I, if I had a fraction, I would multiply each side by the denominator. So let's multiply each side by 0 0.08 over 4. Okay, and then I'll just make it look a little nicer when I write it down here. So I have 3,000 times 0 0.08 over 4. These reduce out on the right side. And now I'm left with D times 1 plus R over K to the 8th power minus 1. And so now I still see that I, this D is like a coefficient. So look what I'm going to do here. I'm going to divide each side by this 1 plus 0 0.08 over 4 to the 8th minus 1 to each side. And I know that seems overwhelming because it's such a big piece of numerator to divide by. But um, you will... Um, be able to do all of it in the calculator. So don't worry about, you know, oh no, it's it seems like too big. Your calculator does all that hard work. Your goal again is just to see how much Mr. DJ would want to deposit every quarter to get $3,000 in two years at an 8% interest rate. Okay, so now D is going to be equal to, let me rewrite it nicely here, D on the left equal to Again, this, these reduce out, so we're left with the 3,000, the P sub N times the R over K in the numerator, all divided by um, 1 plus R over K in the denominator, which is 0 0.08 over 4, to NK, which is 8, minus 1 in the denominator. And so if I put this amount in the calculator, you'll see I'm going to put, so let me put the red parentheses, right? So we'll put parentheses like this. And these ones here go around the denominator. So parentheses all 3,000 times 0 0.08 divided by 4 divided by parentheses 
parenthesis 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 4 exponent 8 minus 1 parenthesis. And so notice that I kind of was robotic, right? Like I, I, and because I'm using a robot, I'm using a calculator. So I want to make sure I'm like parenthesis 3000 must compute, right? That's how you want to be when you're entering in the calculator. It has to be very like structured and identical. And then once you do, you don't get any errors. So we get 349. And then, of course, every penny counts. So we'll round to the nearest cent. So 9 is higher than 5, so we're going to make this 53 cents. OK, so the real question was, how much should he deposit into each uh, quarter to get 3,000 in two years? So we'll say something like, well, Mr. DJ will deposit. $349.53 every quarter in order to earn $3,000 in two years with 8% interest. Right. Right, that's the idea is like, okay, if he's given all these other parameters, like 8% interest every quarter, then he has to deposit 350, about 350 bucks every quarter. So, okay.